the Port of Leith, a bustling district of homes, shops, offices, restaurants and bars, but above all, a harbour. For more than two centuries, Leith was the busiest port in Scotland, serving the nearby capital city of Edinburgh. It was home to thriving whaling and fishing communities, a shipbuilding industry and an embarkation point for passenger travel. But most of all, Leith was an essential hub for imports, exports and all the maritime trades that went with them. Tons of timber came to Scotland from the Baltic. Whole tree trunks were floated into a dock still known today as the timber bush. Tons of coal from mines throughout the Lothian region were exported via Leith. The whaling ships came and went on their epic voyages to far-flung waters. In 1555, a building was erected here on the busy thoroughfare of Kirkgate. Parts of that original building are still standing, including the underground vaults and part of the perimeter wall. Its name was Trinity House. Trinity House was an alms house, or charitable institution, run by a guild called the Corporation of Masters and Mariners of Leith. They were the men who owned and operated the ships that plied these waters. Seafaring was a hazardous way of life, and mariners who did survive to old age often faced woeful poverty. Trinity House existed to support sick, aged and infirm mariners of Leith and their families. The building of 1555 functioned as a hospital or hospice where the sick could be lodged. The masters and mariners also distributed money to those in need. Trinity House was funded mainly by the prime guilt. This was a tax levied on all imports and exports passing through Leith. Some captains proved reluctant to pay up. So, in 1566, Mary Queen of Scots ratified the collection of prime guilt. Queen Mary also granted royal authority to the Masters of Leith to oversee the training and licensing of mariners, and Trinity House became the governing body for pilotage. Pilots were responsible for navigating shipping safely in and out of a port. By the 18th century, most Leith pilots were fishermen, recruited from the nearby harbour of New Haven. So to be a pilot to bring in a ship into Leith, etc., or take it out, would require a Trinity House of Leith qualified pilot. He would have to pay for his examination and then an annual fee for every year of his active time as a pilot. And never there was literally thousands of these certificates issued and every one is a fee and the monies would be lodged in here. From the 1780s, the masters and mariners of Trinity House took a keen interest in lighthouses. They campaigned for new lighthouses on the Isle of May and the Bell Rock, two notorious black spots for shipwrecks off the east coast of Scotland. By the early 1800s, the building of 1555 had fallen into disrepair. A substantial meeting room was also required, as Trinity House now had more than a hundred members. The old building was demolished in 1815, and on the 4th of June 1816, work began on a new building on the same site. The new building was completed in September 1817. But before it was even finished, fault was found with the decoration. John Hay, who was the master of Trinity House at the time that this building was constructed, was very disappointed with the ceiling and insisted on an elaborate ceiling that we have today with all the mouldings that you can see. Trinity House now operates as a maritime museum, and the convening room is still the jewel in its crown. This grand room is filled with maps and charts, model ships, training tools, exotic curios brought back from the ends of the earth, and a host of other artefacts relating to the long maritime history of Leith. The convening room also contains paintings of some very notable figures. Whaling was very important in the 19th century. There was a large amount of wealth being brought into the port of Leith through the whaling industry. 
An important character at that time was Peter Wood, whose portrait's hanging here in the convening room, painted by Rayburn. And we still have the original narwhal tusk walking stick here on the table that you can see in the picture. Inevitably, Leith's seafaring men found themselves at war over the years, and Trinity House holds some lasting reminders of their exploits. Another picture by Rayburn that we have is of Admiral Duncan, who won a very famous Navy battle at Camperdown against the Dutch in 1797. The First World War is commemorated too in one of Trinity House's most remarkable features, the memorial window on the stairs. It was commissioned by Colina M. Grant, the daughter of a ship owner, and the only woman to be received into honorary membership of Trinity House. By the late 1700s, passenger services were a growth industry. Journeys had always been quicker and easier by sea than on land, and now the famous Leith Smacks plied the East Coast routes, carrying passengers to and from London. They rule supreme for the best part of 50 years. The reason being that there's a missing section to the national railway system until the viaducts opened in 1850. So with the arrival of the railways, that chops off that carrying trade. Leith's importance as a harbour also declined. From the Act of Union onwards, the whole axis of Scottish development economically is switching to the West and the Atlantic trades. So it's the Clyde that's going to be the great story in the future. Alternative sources of charitable assistance to the poor were also emerging. With the arrival of parish councils taking over the roles of catering for the invalid and the unemployed and the poor, Trinity House's functions start to shrink dramatically. In 2004, Trinity House of Leith was placed into state care. Responsibility for the building and its collections passed into the hands of Historic Scotland. Since then, the building has been carefully maintained and many items in the collections have been conserved. Some of the paintings have required special attention. We're currently working on a, a programme of conservation treatment of the collection of easel paintings at Trinity House. We would decide on the priority of the conservation work by carrying out an initial condition assessment of all the paintings. Once a painting has been selected for treatment, it is transferred to our painting conservation studio in Edinburgh. At the moment we are investigating the painting using an infrared camera, which allowed us to identify the technique used by the artist. As well as the front of the canvas, the back and the frame may require conservation treatment. The condition of this frame is reasonably stable. What I can see just now are a few elements in the composition that are loose and a few cracks around that need to, to be stabilised. Once the conservation process is complete, the painting will be returned to Trinity House, where it will take its place among this fascinating collection. Today, Trinity House is still a thriving focus for Leith's maritime community. Every November, the Masters and Mariners commemorate Merchant Navy war casualties in a memorial service at South Leith Parish Church and a wreath-laying ceremony at the monument on Leith's shore. The house is also a hub for learning. A rich programme of community projects enables local people of all ages to connect with the house and enables new audiences to discover its secrets. Local school pupils act as junior guides, discovering and sharing the history of Trinity House and its part in the story of Leith. There's huge value for the pupils of Leith in taking part in a project like this. Uh, part of the Curriculum for Excellence is about developing confidence and having the opportunity to share their expertise with their wider community has been brilliant for building their confidence. Our rationale at Leith Primary School is to be fully involved in this community. A big part of that is about learning about the rich history of this area. We've had overwhelming support from the parents. Because their children have been involved in it, it's opened it out to the wider community. And parents have been fascinated to learn about it. But they've also been really proud to see that their children can take a leading role in sharing information with the wider community. On the 4th of June 2016, Trinity House celebrated the 200th anniversary of the present building. 
the house continues to involve local people and to receive visitors from far and wide, just as Leith Harbour has done for many centuries. <laughs>